which do the, the Bucks play the Bills, don't they? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. a couple of weeks on Thursday Night Football. Oh, is that Thursday Night Football? Prime video. Uh, oh, yeah. Wanted to talk about the Bucks. Talk about the NFC South and your thoughts after four weeks of football. I mean, the Saints, while Derek Carr is hurt, uh, do not look great. I mean, the Bucks have a pretty stout defense. Alvin Kamara was his first game back, but he did touch the ball like 30 times. Um, the the Panthers look pathetic. Yeah, I mean, and Ritter is not the guy for Atlanta. So, with that being said, I feel much better now, especially after that first game against New Orleans. You know about how the Bucks are going to finish in this division in the long run, and it is tough for the Bucks to win in New Orleans. New Orleans, it is. It is. It no, is Hunter, they, they, I think when we went through picking our picks uh, on the Bucks schedule, we had that down as a, I mean, pretty much a loss because we, you know, we always expect a 50 50 flip. You know, I, I had the Bucks start one and three. Um, I knew this defense was going to be great because they were great last year, but I was just concerned with the offense and I was concerned with a rookie play caller and I was concerned with staying healthy, Getting which, baked. you know, thank God they have the bye week because if they didn't, I don't think Mike Evans will be playing this week. Uh, but you know, staying healthy is going to be something they're going to need to do because they don't have a lot of depth. Like there's a lot of things that have to go right for them and continue to go right. But they have certainly exceeded my expectations, and uh, Baker Mayfield's got me excited. No, I like Baker. I like I think the play calling with Baker and how they've kind of and I, once again it's an early season. Yeah, they are three and one. They they looked uh, pedestrian against the Eagles, and we have beaten the Bears. And the Vikings, who've got their first wins, and the Saints are up and down. But I feel that the play calling is mixing in with Baker, and Baker is holding on to the ball. Even though those teams uh, aren't the best, the Bears and the Vikings, they still could have lost it. I mean, it's any given Sunday. Yeah. I mean, the Vikings game, it was a three point game. Yeah. You know, Bucks needed critical first downs to hang on to the football, not give the Vikings a chance, and win that game. If you don't have Chase McLaughlin hitting a 57 yarder, that game goes to overtime. You yep. know, there's a there's a lot of things that they have done right as far as a team that is learning how to win. But someone called into uh our podcast last week and they made a good point. And when you think about like the core players that the Bucks have now, obviously a lot of those guys still a part of the Super Bowl team. Devin White, Vita Vea, Levante David's still there, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, um, who else did they have? Tristan Wirfs, uh, I guess Robert Hainsey. Actually, yeah. he was drafted after the Super Bowl year. Did you say uh, Will? Will Golston, yep. um, Carlton Davis, Jamel Dean, Antoine Winfield Jr. You know, there's a lot of players and a lot of talented players who know how to win. Like, you remember for the longest time we were saying about the Bucks, they have to learn how to win. They're a young team that has to learn how to win because we would see them get up 24-10 to 10 and then find a way to lose that game. Yep. They exactly. have to find a way to win now. And a lot of these guys who were drafted, this core knows how to win. All they know is how to win. Antoine Winfield Jr., Tristan Wirfs, uh, some of these younger players on the team, you know, Devin White missed the playoffs his rookie year, has not missed the playoffs since. Tristan Wirfs, Antoine Winfield Jr. have never missed the playoffs in their Bucks career, in their NFL career. So it's like, I, I think it's paying off. You know, better coaching on the offensive side of the ball, but just a mature, I guess a mature core group of players is going a long way. And again, it gets me excited because they're playing beyond my expectations. And I'm usually really positive. Well, Joe pulls out whiskey, says, after the Buffalo Bills game, see if you put the word great behind Tampa Bay Buccaneer defense. That will be the Ooh. test. I guess, I, I guess. I mean, yeah, you know, week one is usually an outlier for a lot of teams, but they played a pretty good offense, at least an effective offense in Minnesota. You know, Kirk Cousins doesn't fucking throw 11 touchdowns by accident. I mean, they played a pretty good offense in the Eagles. They did. Swift. And yeah, he they did. Up. And aside from not being able to stop the run, they did do a pretty good job of slowing down Philadelphia the first two quarters of the game. Yeah, the turn. Um, yeah. And Philadelphia is the cream of the crop in the NFC. So the same could be said about the Bills and AFC, and I'll agree that, yeah, it's probably not going to be the best week for the Bucks defense. No. Uh, I don't think anyone's saying that. I don't even think they're going to win that week. But I think they'll make it a competitive game. I, I think they should. I don't know. Short week for the Bucs. Thursday night football. That fucking sucks. And I don't know if... Uh, Up in Buffalo, too. Yeah. 
I think it's I mean, October, not December. Yeah, next week's going to be difficult. Ga- or not next week. Uh, yeah, next week. Uh, this the Lions game. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a tough game too. Yeah, I mean Lions are playing well. Lions they, are playing they, well, man. They moved moved it to four twenty five, Dan. Yeah, man. They're 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 paying attention to us. They're going to be able to sleep in a little bit more here, not go out and experience the uh, Tampa lifestyle. <laughs> I uh, saw an article today that said Baker Mayfield is like showing up at dive bars with Bucks players. Jason Light said that in Tampa. Yeah. You know, he, he, huh. he, uh, I'll, I'll find the quote, but Jason Light went on a podcast or a show, a talk show, sports show lately, just recently. And he said, uh, he had very high praise for Bake. He basically said he's the man. He said, quote, Baker is a dude. And the player saw it right away. He took the offensive line to the Bahamas during camp after final cuts to golf. He spotted around town at dive bars with receivers, with Mike Evans, with Godwin. He is that guy. He's the man, and it is not fake. I want to see what kind of dive bars they're talking about, though. Fucking dive. Probably the retreat. I call that a dive bar because the, the, the <laughs> yeah. lightning used to go in there. Maybe, uh, what's the name of the one in Ebor on 7th? Reservoir. Right, reservoir bar. Going in there. Going. Well, I'm guessing that he probably lives in, like, Davis Island or South Tampa. He has, so from what I heard... He shares an apartment with Luke Gedeke and uh, and one other offensive line. It, Luke Gedeke and I think Coquieved. I think they all live in an apartment. Is Baker married? <clears throat> yes. I mean, he, so, so which is why I was kind of surprised. But you know, it is a one-year contract. He probably just wanted to move down here and then eventually look for something. He went from living at the stadium to living <laughs> in an apartment with Luke Gedeke. Hey, that's a step up, pal. That is very true. That you are you are a hundred percent correct on that one. Um, man, I forgot the Bucks had a bye week this week. Yeah, I know you were expecting a game, but yeah. I, it'll be stress free football on Sunday, and, and I kind of like that, especially when you're three and one, first in the division. You get yeah. to watch some football and not really worry about if my team's gonna win. Yeah, but I didn't start worrying about fucking fantasy. Am I one and three? Am my shitty team that decides not to show up halfway through the year? Trevor Lawrence took a complete shit. It's crazy how it's already week five, but I'm just glad that we're at the point now where my biggest worry on Sunday is my fantasy team. Exactly. Uh, you're not worried about the Bucks, But, I mean, look, the Bucks next couple games are going to be tough. Uh, Absolutely. So Lions and then uh, Falcons, that's always a tough game to certainly be in the division. At the Bills, the Texans obviously are looking a lot better. Uh, Titans, 49ers, Colts, Panthers. Yeah, beat the it's Packers. It's not going to be a cakewalk. No. You know, you get a nice stretch. I would say after the Niners, you get a nice stretch. The Colts, even though Anthony Richardson, you'll know what he is by then. But you got the Colts at Indy, home versus Carolina, and then at Atlanta. Back-to-back division games is going to be tough, but both of those teams, I just don't think. But a Green Bay, December. At Green Bay in December, that's going to be tough. But how's Jordan Love going to be playing? You know, he, he's kind of the, the, the fire that he had the first two weeks is kind of wearing off. Seems like people, even Bubba is like, eh, you know, he kind of played like ass the last game. Well, they're two and two, right? I think so. Yeah, they're two and two. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not too bad. 